What's going on guys, I'm Chase, and today I'm asking the question, is this $700 Shoei X14 better than this $70 G-Max GM38? And if so, by how much? This should be interesting. So guys, a couple weeks ago, I did a first fit episode of this Shoei X14, and in that video, basically said that this is pretty much the best helmet that I have ever worn. I'll leave a link down below for you guys that want to check it out. After that video, I started thinking, if a $700 helmet can feel this nice, what would a helmet on the opposite side of the spectrum feel like? So guys, when I started writing, I was waiting tables and going to college. So to say that money was tight was a massive freaking understatement. And I'm sure there's a ton of you guys out there that can't afford to put a $700 lid on your head. What I want to figure out today is what are you sacrificing by going with a more budget-friendly head bucket? First off, let's talk safety. So both helmets have the exact same DOT certification, though the $700 Shoei also has Snell approval. If you're not familiar with what DOT and Snell are, they're just different certifications for the safety of helmets. All helmets to be road legal, at least in the US, do need to be DOT certified, and that's done through a government agency. Snell rating is voluntary for manufacturers and is a much more rigorous process to get done by the helmet companies. Now as far as weight goes in these helmets, I was actually surprised. The $70 G-Max comes in at 3.4 pounds, while the Shoei weighs slightly more at 3.62 pounds. Comparing the looks of the helmet side by side, you can see the G-Max doesn't take up quite as much space as the X14 does, so that's probably where the added weight comes from. Regardless, I was pretty surprised that they weigh so similar. So since we're looking at the helmets, let's talk about the looks for a second. Now, we all know that looks are obviously an opinionated subject, and we won't all agree, but my personal opinion is that the G-Max looks dull and boring. It kind of reminds me of one of those crappy helmets you're given when you go to ride go-karts or something. This is compared to the showy helmet that has a beautiful shape with aggressive lines running along the helmet. I personally love the aerodynamic look, and after riding with that showy, I was able to understand that not only did the lines in the shape of the helmet look good, but they also helped tremendously with wind buffeting. When you ride at upper highway speeds around 80 miles an hour, you sometimes forget that you're flying through the air at that speed, and going faster than that, you can still barely tell that there's any wind at all. The G-Max, on the other hand, I could start feeling my head buffeting around the 65 to 70 mile per hour mark. Again, if you look at the shapes of each helmet, the G-Max isn't really shaped to cut through the air like the Shoei is. Next up, let's talk about build quality. This is where I saw the biggest difference between these two helmets. The first thing that jumped out to me when I got the G-Max were the vents. They seem to be made out of a super cheap plastic, they don't feel solid at all. Watch when I move them around. There seems to be next to no rigidity to them at all. While I was testing the helmet, I never had them open up after closing them, but I can't see these lasting very long at all. Whereas on the Shoei, the vents seem solid and have a really satisfying feel when opening and closing them. They also seem to click into place at the open and close points better than the G-Max. The padding on the inside was also a huge difference between the two. The G-Max felt more spacious on the inside, which I'm not convinced is a good thing, but it felt like that because instead of holding my entire head inside of it, I felt like there was about five areas of my head that were actually being held. This not only leads to a feeling of unsafety, but it also put a pressure point on my forehead after riding around for a little while. Now granted, I might just have a big forehead or something, but this is something that I wasn't really happy with. Comparatively, the Shoei held my head much more evenly and the material of the liner was an entirely different level of comfort and feel. This is also going to sound really weird, but the G-Max has a lot of mouth room. Now I know this is probably something that only a person that rides around and talks to himself on a daily basis would probably notice, but it is an observation, so I figured it would be important to tell you. Now, surprisingly, both helmets have visor removal systems that don't require any tools. Similar to the air vents though, this is another situation where I could really tell the cheaper plastic was used on the G-Max, as opposed to the seemingly carbon fiber on the Shoei. I do have to give the G-Max credit though, the visor did come on and off relatively simple, and the release mechanism worked fine. I would just worry about its integrity over time and many uses. Speaking of the visor, I know having a pin lock system is also very important to a lot of people. The Shoei includes this while the G-Max does not, but I feel that's pretty expected for a budget lid. I will say I wasn't happy with the opening and the closing of the visor on the G-Max. Opening and closing it multiple times, you can feel that it lacks a correct amount of rigidity that you find on the Shoei. 
When you move the showy visor up and down, especially if you click it into the closed position, you know that thing is not going anywhere. That being said, while riding around in the G-Max, I never had the visor come open or move from where it was, so I guess it's not too bad? For visibility while wearing the helmets, I have to say they are both extremely similar. Both helmets had just a bit of helmet that I could see at the edges of my vision, and other than that, it was all open road ahead of me. Surprisingly, both helmets come with anti-fog visors with them. I found this to be relatively true, though the Shoei was a little harder to make fog. If I could even get the Shoei to fog up, it was normally gone in less than a second, whereas the G-Max would typically stay fogged for a couple seconds. To be fair, the Shoei has about twice as many air vents as the G-Max does, so it's able to push a ton more air through. That even includes the cheek pad cooling that the X14 does, which I have to say I absolutely love. As you can see in my test footage of the G-Max, I didn't have the best weather for testing how it performed on a hot day, but the air being pushed through the G-Max was barely even noticeable, where the X14 felt like tiny little fans in front of your face while riding. Something else to keep in mind with these helmets is not only the price of the actual helmet itself, but actually the price of the accessories that you can buy for it. I found out that the prices mirrored that of the helmets. For instance, to get a new visor for the X14 is going to set you back around 60 bucks after shipping, where a visor on the G-Max will cost you less than 20 bucks. These are things to keep in mind when purchasing either of these guys. Okay, now for my biggest reason why I cannot recommend the G-Max 38 for you guys, and that is the strap. As you can see here on the X14, like most helmets, it has a D-ring metal loop that you thread the strap through and it clicks in on the other side. There's also a nice red lanyard to help you remove the helmet while you're wearing gloves. Now let's look at the G-Max. Yep, no red lanyard and button to clip the end of the strap into, and this piece of bungee cable that I can only assume is to hold the strap in place. For me personally, this is unacceptable for riding a motorcycle. Remember how I said earlier that the G-Max reminded me of a helmet you're given when you go ride go-karts? Well, this is probably why. Because those people at the end of the day don't really care about the safety of your head. And that's the feeling I had while riding with this. Now, again to be fair, while out riding with the G-Max, I never had the strap come undone, thankfully, but I did not feel comfortable while riding the motorcycle knowing there was a flapping strap under my helmet that wasn't secured into anything, and that's not a feeling I want while I'm riding. So without listing out all the specs that the X14 has that the G-Max doesn't, I'm going to go ahead and assume that my point is made. At the end of the day, I don't think you have to ride with a showy helmet. Having recently spent some time with one, I can tell you it's totally worth the money and a pleasure to ride in, but the reality is not everyone has $700 to spend on a helmet. What I can personally do is recommend when you buy a helmet, make sure it has what I would consider the bare minimums, and a clicking strap is included in that. We all know a $700 helmet is going to be heads and tails better than a $70 helmet, but I would recommend you spending a little more money on what you're going to put your head in. Helmets are a piece of gear that I don't skimp on, and trust me, I've been in the position where I really don't have the money to buy all the gear I needed, much less high quality stuff. But I have always bought the best helmet I can possibly afford at the time. I'm not of the mentality that you have to ride in a snow rated helmet 24 seven, but I would recommend you spend as much as you can on what is going to eventually save your brain when you come off your bike while riding. But guys, at the end of the day, what you ride in is your decision. These are just my opinions, and I would love to know yours in the comments. Do you guys have any stories of riding in cheaper or more expensive helmets? If you do, let us know them down there. And guys, I appreciate you watching this video. Hopefully you found it interesting and it helped you out. And if it did help you out, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you have a friend that's trying to cheap out on a helmet, maybe share this video with them. You might just save their life. <laughs> guys, I'm Chase. I appreciate you watching this video. You guys go out there and ride positive, and I'll see you on the next one. Later. For all you guys thinking I have a green screen behind me, it's it's not a green screen. It's an interactive green screen. I can walk into the green screen and I can grab things.